In this video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into the new assemblies and kits features for Zoho Inventory. It's kind of a big improvement to the way that composite items work, especially in managing a process that involves bundling the component items into that finished good that's ready to sell. So before we jump in, I do wanna ask if you find the video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment if this is something that you've been looking for for a while and let me know if there's any other videos you'd like us to make. And as always, just head on over to Zonata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho install. So first, let's jump in. We're gonna take a quick look at the news story. Then we're gonna jump into Zoho inventory and we're actually just gonna run through one of these together. So the main two things here is that the idea of a bundle is essentially being broken down into either an assembly or a kit. An assembly is going to be a thing that requires some type of physical work from individual components, right? So this is probably the closest to what we would think of as an assembly or a bundle and composite in the past. One of the nice things with these assemblies that I will show you is that you can actually bundle in cost only labor time. So if you did want to actually distribute some like rent cost or labor cost into the process of running an assembly, you can actually do that. So we're getting a little bit of that, like, wouldn't say work in progress tracking, but at least like the cost tracking associated with production is built in a bit more natively here. Kit items are kind of something where, hey, we've got three different things and we're going to put them together, but they're not really being assembled, right? So maybe you sell ties and pocket squares and I want to make a bundle that has one of each of the same kind of color or pattern, right? So I'm just taking those things and putting them in the same box. So we're going to call that a kit rather than an assembly where again, you can kind of set some custom prices and kind of manage that. So Really, the big thing is that previously, these two types of items we know in the real world are different, right? The thing that we actually have to assemble, we're screwing things together, we're soldering, you know, we're actually like building a thing out of some materials is inherently different than like, I'm putting a pocket square and a tie in the same box and sending them to a customer, right? So now they're kind of broken out into these two different categories so that we can actually track them appropriately, right? They, they are different, so they should be tracked differently. So with that, let's actually jump into the tool. We're going to go through an assembly first because I do think that's the more meaningful update here. The reality is a kit is basically what we had before, right? Where we're just taking components, making them into a finished good, and then selling it to a customer. So here inside of my demo inventory account, we've got our product here. I'm going to actually rename this an assembled product just so it's a little bit cleaner in our demo. But so we have this composite item. We're still calling them composites, basically meaning that this product is created by combining these two products. Now, the one thing I will also highlight is that as a part of a composite, we can actually track associated services. So I'm actually going to add one here so that we can see how this works. And let's say we have this associated service, $20 of a labor cost. Now, I could write this to my cost of goods sold, or I could actually create a different cost account, right, that actually tracks specifically the assembly cost of labor. For this example, I'm going to put it in the cost of goods, but just know that you could add a separate sub account if you did want to carve that out separately. Of course, as always, we can set our sale and our cost price based on a sum or we could discount it. Um, but you already know about composite items. Probably why you clicked on this video is to learn about assemblies. So let's get into that. I'm going to save this now that we've gone through our little kind of overview. And then we're going to look at this assemblies module itself. So I do have a couple demo records in here, but we are going to start from scratch. What you'll notice is the way this used to work is the only way to do a bundle, which again is essentially what we're doing to transfer stock from the associated items to the composite item, was you'd come up here in the right, you'd click bundle, you'd get to a page that would look a lot like this, where you would choose how much quantity you want to do, you know, whatever it may be. But then the difference is, once you did that bundle, it was done. There's no list of bundles before, right? So if you have a team and the team actually needs to work on these, you'd have to build a totally different thing, right? And so we would do this for clients all the time where an item would be ordered that would necessitate the creation of that item. And so we would create a record in something like CRM or creator and then once that record was done, we would automatically bundle that item just to like transfer the stock over. 
the challenge is you might not want to use Crater. You might want, not want to do this big custom build. You just need a simple list of where I can look and see, hey, what do we need to make and what have we already made, right? That's really all you need to see for a lot of people. So instead of having to create some separate tool and make a Kanban board and track it over there, you can come in, you can make an assembly. I'm going to turn on auto numbering because I don't mind too much what the numbering is. I can choose how many I need. Um, again, we have low stock right now, but it'll let me move forward. So even if I want two, three, four, it'll automatically count the total amount that we need. You'll notice it's tracking that cost only labor so that I can actually account for that as a part of this process. And then depending on how you do this, a lot of the times what I think people are really going to do is these are going to be created as a draft, right? And this can be created via a function or workflow automation. And so what that allows for is the team that's actually doing the assembly can come in, they can see their draft assemblies, and you could create additional custom views here as well, just how you can for any other module. And all of these ones that are draft are essentially the ones that need to be assembled. So if I'm on a you know production floor, I can come in, I can have this list up on a screen. Once this actually is completed, I can mark it as assembled which again, just moves that stock over to that new composite item that's been completed and it's decreased the stock of the items that were um, you know, used to create the composite, right? So now because that's been assembled, it's been moved over to this other custom view where everything has been completed. So again, really the big difference for assemblies is one, makes it a little easier to associate that cost only labor. And two, it gives you a place to actually track what we need to do and what's already been done, right? So pretty significant difference there. Again, just keeping in mind that before there was really just no way to track it. You, there was no way to put, we need to bundle something. You just bundled it once you were done against the item. So everything just had to be tracked separately in some type of other document, whether that hopefully was a Zoho app or maybe a spreadsheet was what a lot of people were really doing. With that assemblies being covered, let's just take a quick look at kits just so you can see exactly how those work as well. So because I wanted to get this video out for all of you pretty quickly here, it looks like kits are not yet rolled out for everybody. They're not rolled out for my account, that is. Um, so I'll kind of go through just what a kit is fundamentally. So the big difference with a kit is really it's a composite item right, that requires multiple different finished goods, but doesn't require an assembly. So rather than even having to bundle or run an assembly at all, it can just automatically deduct the stock, right? So uh, there's actually a common piece of feedback we get because most people using inventory actually fall more into that kit category, which is like, hey, we're just putting a couple things together in a box. And historically, you've always had to bundle in the background, either via a piece of code or manually going in and clicking bundle, right? When these orders actually get fulfilled, which honestly, just a bit of a pain in the butt, if there really isn't any assembly process required. It's like, hey, it's just a tie and a pocket square. I'm putting it in the same box. It's not a process that I need to like track a lot of cost or build into a pipeline. So those kits essentially are just going to be a simpler way for those things that we're really just putting together but not having to assemble and track time and really do a lot of labor or work on. Keep an eye out for this update. It should be rolling out for everybody here over the next couple of weeks. Let me know down in the comment section below if this is something that you are excited to see. While you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you found the video useful. And as always, my name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time.